Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hope and today we are going to talk about historical romances that are basically retellings of some sort of classic something. My original idea for this video concept was to do historical romances that are based on Shakespeare um, and it's going to air while I'm in London. So I thought that would be fun. But then I realized I haven't really read that much Shakespeare. Um, I'm not, not the biggest Shakespeare fan. I don't hate him, but I just, I prefer televised adaptations of Shakespeare's works as opposed to reading the play. I really struggle reading them. I often feel like I don't understand what's going on, but I do love the televised versions or things like that. So what I'm, what I'm thinking is like the Leonardo DiCaprio version specifically of Romeo and Juliet is one of my absolute favorites. Um, and then 10 Things I Hate About You being um, a very modern day adaptation of The Taming of the Shrew. So absolutely love both of those. And I'm actually going to see much ado about not Yeah, I'm actually going to see much ado about nothing. What am I talking about um, when I'm in London? So this will air while I'm in London. So I'm filming a little bit ahead, but I'm going to be pretty excited about it. I've never seen a live like Shakespeare play before. Um, yeah, so we're going to the Globe to see it. We're standing. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun anyway. Um, hopefully I'll have an update on all of that, but know that when this is coming out, that's where I'm going to be. And I love that. So I decided to broaden my horizons a little bit and I added in some fairy tales and also like just other plays and stuff. And I actually learned a little bit, which was really exciting to me. So I have a very large stack of books. I was going to just like pick it up with one hand, but <laughs> so I have this whole stack of books that we are going to talk about. Um, and yeah, we'll get some adaptations in there, which like I said, absolutely love that. And the, this is by no means an exhaustive list. And I have not like read a bunch about it to see if all of these authors have said that these are specific adaptations or anything like that. But I think one of the most well-known adaptations that everyone is talking about right now is probably an offer from a gentleman, which I have right here. So I think this is probably the most well-known one, especially because we know that Benedict is supposed to be getting his story in the TV adaptation of Bridgerton. I don't love Cinderella retellings and I actually don't love the Cinderella movies or anything like that. So I didn't really mention this, but um, Cinderella. So anyway, we're just gonna kind of dive in. So the first one that I have is actually one of my favorites and that is Beauty and the Beast retellings. I absolutely adore Beauty and the Beast retellings. Beauty and the Beast is a Grimm Brothers fairy tale. So we have The Beast of Beswick by Emily Howard. I absolutely adore this one. I think it's so good. It follows a girl named Astrid and Thane, who is a duke. And Astrid and her sister go to Thane because her evil uncle is trying to make her sister marry someone. Thane is like, I'm not gonna help you. So Astrid and her sister basically move into his house. Thane was a war hero and he was injured very badly in the war to the point where his face is like very scarred and one of the saddest parts of this book, honestly, is how people react to Thane. Like, it's so unnecessarily cruel the way that people are. I'm trying to, like, move stuff around. It's so unnecessarily cruel the way that people are to Thane. But I absolutely adore this book. It's such a fantastic story of growth. He finds out a kind of a way to reintegrate himself into society a little bit, finds love, and Astrid is such a support to him. There's a marriage of convenience in here. They're trying to save her sister, and they're trying to live their love story honestly so sold this book is so 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 good like if you haven't read this little duology it's the everly sisters get it now because honestly it's truly amazing um and then another beauty and the beast retelling that i have i don't have two for everything but i definitely have two for this one and there's way more but the duchess seal by tessa dare this is part of the girl meets duke series and in this one we are following emma and ash this is like super fun. Emma is actually a seamstress and Ash is a duke who is also a war hero who has been like injured and his face is very scarred and he was going to marry this girl. Emma made the wedding dress. He ended up like the engagement fell apart. She comes to his house and she's like, you are going to pay me. So one thing leads to another and they end up entering into a marriage of convenience. It basically brings Emma up from being a seamstress to being a duchess and it has a lot of really interesting bits it's like a rule for the there's like rules for their marriage um which we know never works and of course it's on his part he's making up all of these rules and he is like this is how it's going to be and she's like absolutely not so of course she's weaseling her way into his heart 
so good. And as with every Tessa Dare book, there is a pet. It is a cat in this one. You guys know I love a pet cat. I'm looking at my pet cat currently. You're probably going to see him jump across the light in just a minute. And absolutely adore a cat. And truly absolutely adored this book as well. It's one of my favorites in the series so far. Let's see. And then we are going to move to a Midsummer Night's Dream. So the one that I have for this is Pleasure for Pleasure by Eloisa James. All of the Essex sisters books actually fit into Shakespeare. So Eloisa James is just a pen name. Her name is actually Mary Bly and she is a professor of Shakespeare. I feel like it would be so very interesting to sit in on one of her classes. Um, so this one is following Josie in Maine and it's a whole she is younger than him they're family friends he's been jilted by one of her sisters and also he's engaged to someone else but he gets stood up again poor Maine um and him and Josie end up marrying uh and it makes a lot of references to a Midsummer Night's Dream now I haven't actually read A Midsummer Night's Dream, so I cannot tell you if it is like a true adaptation or just references it a lot, but I did notice a lot of references. He um, like compares kind of Josie to Tatiana, the Queen of the Fairies. I do know a bit about the book, but I don't learn about the play, but I have never seen it. I think this one is so good. You get so much of like the history. If you read the series in order, it's fantastic. But if you read out of order, it's also still fantastic. And you get so much of the history and everything. And you really feel the love that Josie and Maine have for one another, even before they're married. And she's always talking about like, he's so old. He's like 30. She's 19. It's not that much different. But there's a fun scene where he's like, putting on her gown to try to teach her how to walk sexy. It's so much fun. I truly adored this book. It's one of the first historical romances that I ever recall reading and I was so happy to get my hands on it again and reread it and it really stood the test of time for me. I still love it. Okay so then we are going to move to The Taming of the Shrew. Um, I have read The Taming of the Shrew. I absolutely detested it. I thought it was dumb. I didn't like it. Um, I apologize for that. Um, I will tag that video in here though. I feel like it's awful that I'm like, I hate, yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's awful that I'm like, I don't like Shakespeare. I want to like Shakespeare and I think I actually like his tragedies more than his comedies, but whatever. So the first one that I have is another Essex Sisters book. This one, wow, my lights are so bad. Um, they just reflect really badly. So the first one that I have is going to be this one, The Taming of the Duke. We're following Imogene and Rafe. He is the Duke of Holbrook. She was once his ward, and then she married against his wishes and became a widow. Then she tried to have an affair with everyone else, and now he's still trying to, like, keep the reins on her. Still not working. He was an alcoholic, but he has been spending time recovering, and his brother is at his house, as is Imogene, and Imogene starts, like, flirting with his brother, and starts like having secret meetings with who he thinks she thinks is his brother but you have to recall that Imogene knows um Rafe super well I think this is super fun they're both quite angry quite disgruntled with their lot they both have a lot of struggles to overcome and I think there's a lot of character growth in this book and in this series for both of them now in the very beginning I absolutely hated Imogene I hated her um, she slowly grew on me and I really think she had a great redemption in her own book. Now, Rafe, I didn't necessarily hate him, but he was absolutely useless and totally a drunk. But he also had such a good redemption. If you love a story of redemption, I think this is perfect for you, which is not necessarily what The Taming of the Shrew is about. I did a classic and retelling of The Taming of the Shrew and The Taming of the Duke that I'm going to tag up here at some point and you'll get more of my thoughts on that, I think. So there is also another one that I have, and that is 10 Things I Hate About the Duke by Loretta Chase. So in this one, we are following Cassandra, who is a very strong woman. Like, she does not need a man or any of a man's bullshit. Um, and then Ashmont, the Duke, who is just kind of silly. He's just like a silly guy, like a good time guy. He's just like live, laugh, love all the time. And the two of them are thrown together. And this ends up being a story of him bettering himself to win her. And I really like that. She has like all of these charitable projects that she works on. She is truly a good person, but she's a very no-nonsense person. 
and she is kind of an angry person, um, as anyone would be if they were a woman in this time period, I feel like. Um, and Ashmont is just, like I said, a good time guy. He's just out there having a ball. And he doesn't really care about whose expense he's having a ball with at, anything like that. And his character growth, I think, is really good. Um, this is a whole series, and I think all of them are based on Shakespeare, but I don't know what all of them are. I haven't finished it. But I ended up really enjoying this one. I think it's a lot of fun. I love the character growth that he goes through, and I think that he does, like, do a good job with that. Though, really, originally, he was just kind of an idiot. And then we move on to one of my favorites and probably my best well-known of Shakespeare's works, which is Romeo and Juliet, the classic tale of two feuding families. So for the first one, I have A Reckless Match by Kate Bateman. This is part of the Ruthless Rivals series, and we are following the Davies and the Montgomerys. So they're a family, the, um, is it the Montgomerys? live in England and the Davies live just across the border in Wales and every year a representative from each family has to meet in a specific location um, and basically shake hands to continue a truce. Now these are not like we kill each other on sight type of families. They are the children played together as children but their families are still feuding. So this year it's Maddie Montgomery and Griff Davies who have to do this little meet up. And the two of them have kind of been antagonists since they were kids but there's not real pure hatred there. Anyway, the Montgomerys are really struggling. The Davies are not. And Maddie is trying to, like, find this treasure. And there's smugglers and a treasure hunt and a cave-in. And there's a lot of drama. And a lot of this family, these two families working together. I thought this was so fun. It is a fantastic series starter. And truly, you could say that any of the books in this series do go with, like, the feuding families theme. But... I absolutely adore this one. There's so much action and the way that they end up coming together I think is fantastic. Um, I love how headstrong and willful and just strong both of our characters are. I love how their romance ends up playing out, how they end up falling for one another even though they don't want to. Like honestly it is so good. It is so fun. Absolutely adore it. And then I actually have like one more for this particular one. That is Rogue with a Brogue by Suzanne Enoch. This is part of the Scandalous Highlanders series. In this one, we are following Mary Campbell and Aaron McLawry. So two feuding families. They end up meeting in a ballroom. Mary knows who Aaron is. Aaron has no idea who Mary is. They dance. It's very scandalous. And then they're at another party and they end up kissing. So that sets her family into quite the tizzy and they decide that they are going to spirit Mary away and marry her to a cousin. And Aaron decides he's going to save her. Um, ensuing this like long road trip, they're trying to get to the Campbell who is like her grandfather um, and basically plead for mercy that she doesn't want to marry this other guy. So they are starting a road trip from London all the way to Scotland. They're hiding in secret rooms. They're meeting family members. People are getting hurt. Carriages are crashing. And it is literally an all out sprint to the church. Um, to meet the Campbell at gunpoint, basically. So, so, so exciting and so fun. I love all of Suzanne Enoch's Highlander novels, specifically the Highlanders that find themselves in England because it is often so very chaotic. Um, the families in this one actually do hate one another. It's not like a very casual, like, we have a centuries-old feud. These are Highland clans who are feuding. They absolutely detest one another, and they have to figure out a way to make this work, and they have one chance. If this fails, probably Aaron is going to be murdered, and Maddie, and um, Mary is just going to be married off to this evil man. So, like, it's one chance. And I think that's so good. The stakes are high. It is so fantastic. Let's see what is next. So, Much Ado About Nothing. That's the play that I'm going to see. Um, so, I have Much Ado About You by Eloisa James. So, in this one, we are following Tess and Lucius. Tess is the oldest of four sisters. I think she's the oldest, right? Yeah. So, she has to marry quickly. They're all the wards of the Duke of Holbrook, like I said. And she knows that she needs to marry well and marry quickly. So, she's kind of like seeing the Earl of Maine for a bit. Um, who Josie ends up marrying later, but she ends up jilting him. And Lucius Felton has, like, kind of come in, and she doesn't want to marry him. He is, like, an irredeemable rogue. His grandmother even says that he's irredeemable. So he's, like, the exact opposite of what she wants. 
and the two of them start spending time together, of course, and they realize that there's more than, you know, each of them know. They start to like each other. I felt like the note that I kind of took from this is once they start, I think their communication is good. It's not like a bunch of misunderstandings and chaos. I feel like they end up having like a relatively uncomplicated relationship once like it truly begins and I do enjoy that. I really liked both characters. I like them later too. We go back and visit them quite a bit. Like them later too but I really enjoyed them just starting off. I liked both of them. I understood their reasonings for things. I felt like this was really well done. And then the last play that we're going to talk about is, is it was pronounced Pygmalion. So it is the first adaptation of what we all know as like she's all that so clearly that's a 90s movie another movie that I really like I didn't actually know I guess I thought that the whole thing started with she's all that uh which is kind of silly of me because you know you know better like they didn't come up with that in the 90s but I still think that it's a super fun take. So the first suggestion that I have for that is Lady Claire is All That by Maya Rodell. This is, do you see Hades little ears? He's about to knock that stack of books over. It's part of the Keeping Up the Cavendishes series. It is um, Americans who are in England who um, the brother has inherited and they are basically taking their place in society and struggling. So Claire is very smart. She's a mathematician and Lord Fox is very handsome and kind of a dick. So he ends up betting his cousin, his favorite hunting dog, that he is going to be able to make Claire the toast of the time. Okay, first off, I hate that someone would do that. But I think this is like a very good direct adaptation of it. Um, I love the way Maya Rodell writes. I love this story of these American siblings that are getting there. I don't love Fox. I don't really care about any kind of redemption art that Fox had. I don't like him because if you would bet your favorite dog knowing that your cousin's not going to take care of it um I think you're a pretty crappy excuse for a man so bye fox but yeah this series is great and then the last one that I have look I have no chill for people that don't take care of their animals um is my fake rake by Eva Lee and in this one we are following Grace and Sebastian this is a little bit less of a direct retelling but we have Grace and she is a smarty pants she's like an anthropologist or something. Is she an anthropologist? Scientific pursuits? She's a nat. Oh. Okay, anyway. She's something. I don't remember exactly. So, this guy that she likes basically comes back. So, she decides that in order to make him jealous, she needs to have, like, the perfect rake already courting her. So, she goes to her friend Sebastian and is like, hey, let's turn you into, like, a fake rake. Um, and you can pretend to court me and make this other guy jealous. And Sebastian's like, okay. So the two of them end up trying to make him into the perfect rake. They're getting lessons from um, other rakes. I thought this was really fun. I think it's a really sweet take. Their friendship is great. Of course, they fall for one another, but there are going to be a lot of complications along the way. I ended up really enjoying this one. I felt like it could have ended like the drama could have ended just a little bit sooner, but I really enjoyed this. I think there wasn't like a cruel bet going on, which is kind of the gist of Pygmalion and she's all that and even Lady Claire is all that. There's not some sort of cruel bet. It's just turning him into this person in order to make someone else jealous, which really doesn't make it any better, but it doesn't make it quite as cruel. Like he knows about it from the beginning. So that's it. Those are some great retellings that I suggest you read, um, especially if you are interested, I guess, in classics and stuff like that. I have dipped my toe in the classics pond quite a few times, and there are some that I really loved and some that I was like, absolutely not. So um, there's way more where this came from. I'll probably do more of these that are retellings of something. So that is it. That is all that I have for you guys today. I do hope that you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye.